for the uh, topic eight, ma'am and sir, that is for the polygraph test question formulation. How to do the questioning? So, sir, uh, ma'am and sir, this uh, situation po in topic eight po, um, ito po yung very critical part in the uh, conduct of the examination. Kasi po yung question formulation is not is the easy to do. Kasi po dito po nagbe-base yung magiging result po ng polygraph examination. That's why po kailangan po natin na mas masusi at mas maayos na questioning. Medyo um, marami lang po siyang um, sinasabi natin na um, challenging kasi nga po ang dami na po ng ipinopropose nang galing sa APA or sa American Polygraph Association ang dami po nang nai-propose nila ay na input nila diyan sa sa software na na mga question formulation. Actually po thousand na na klase ng pag-formulate uh, ng question. Kaya nga po <clears throat> sa sa part po ng mga 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 polygraphist dito sa Pilipinas, ito po yung uh, pinakang uh, issue kasi how the question formulate. So here, I will give only the general or yung common lang po na ginagamit sa pag-conduct na or pag-bubuo uh, po ng question formulation. Kasi uh, to tell you po kung may mga iba po kayong reference na mababasa, iba-iba po yan. Iba-iba po talaga ang klase. As I said, thousand na po ang klase ng uh, formulation na uh, uh, question test na ginagamit po ngayon. So sa ngayon po, we have uh, first rule to be followed in the formulation of the test question. <clears throat> the first question po is, uh, question must be simple and direct. We should not ask a, sim uh, a question na um, masyadong um, ma mabigat or maybe uh, mahaba. So, if possible, you must ask the question in a simple or uh, a direct question only. Like, for example, are you, wear are you wearing a, um, a green, a green t-shirt today? So that is the way only. Hindi mo siya pwedeng tanungin ng, ng komplikadong tanong na hindi niya kaagad maintindihan. Again, the question must be simple and direct. Direct to the point. Okay? The next, they must not involve legal terminology. Why? Why we must not put, like for example, the rape, the murder, um, the swindling, other, other term and legal terms. Because commonly, we are conducting a polygraph examination to the normal person, to the simple citizen. And that's part, uh, we uh, violate yung ano nila kasi yung legal term are used only sa mga husgado. Ginagamit lang yan sa gaya natin sa law enforcement, na sa law enforcement uh, work. Pero kapag nasa ano, we have to go down yung, yung ano natin, as examiner or we are kind of doing our exam uh, doing our question we go down to their level we, we must ask uh, kaya nga direct yun yung medyo mahirap kasi we must use yung yung tamang tanong para sa kanila na naaakma para sa kanila they must be answerable by yes or no only it must not be answered by any uh, answer you must formulate a question that he must answer yes or no only like for example <clears throat> Did you stop Mr. A? So, yes or no only must be the result of the answer. <clears throat> I'm sorry. <clears throat> the next, he must or must be short as possible. The same with question, uh, as simple. Short uh, as possible. Kaya lang there are a question pa rin dun sa ilang area na kailangan natin like dun sa uh, evidence connecting, hindi natin maiwasan yung, uh, yung medyo mahabang tanong. Pero, Gawa ng paraan, kung pwede, yung simple lang or uh, uh, short lang. Then, their meaning must be clear and unmistakable phrase and language that the subject can easily understand. Anong sabi dyan? Clear and unmistakable phrase. <clears throat> and then, kung pwede, syempre, it must be used yung, yung language niya mismo. Easily to understand by him. Like, for example, Bicol siya, we must the question or we ask the question in Bicol. And it must be clear. Um, hindi mo siya pwedeng gamitan ng English. Uh, we have to use Bicol or Filipino or Tagalog kung siya ay Tagalog. <clears throat> they must not be in, be in a form of accusation. Like for example, 
um did you did you um did you rape miss uh, miss b is a, a form of accusation and then you violate also the other term yung legal term gumamit ka pa rin ng legal term you must not uh, be a form of accusation but here ito yung common na nababayolate ng isang examiner mostly kasi wala man tayong ibang maitanong that's why pag nagtanong ka kasi ng yes or no minsan umaabot na siya sa parang form of accusation basta dapat hangga't maiiwasan we must avoid it another one question must never contain an inference with re, uh, pre opposed knowledge on the part of the subject yung hindi ay yung alam mo na hindi niya naman naiintindihan do not ask that question <clears throat> Another, number eight, question must refer to one offense only. Hindi siya pwede ng dalawang klase ng kaso ang itatanong mo sa kanya. We must focus only one. Uh, dapat, ang pagtatanong mo is kung sa robbery lang, wag mo nang itatanong sa kanya yung tungkol dun sa kanyang pagpatay. Kung dalawa kasi yung kaso. Meron kasi po doon, Anyway, meron naman po kasing pilian yan doon sa, sa software po natin. Meron na po yung pilian ngayon kung pwede mo na rin siyang pagsabayin. Pero mostly sa general po, sa rules po, ipasible one's offense only. You have to focus in one offense only. Another, all question must refer to only one element of an offense. The same, gaya yung sinasabi natin, isa lang na element of offense so that it must not, ano, kasi ang purpose po natin is maintindihan ng subject. Maintindihan po ng subject natin kung ano yung itinatanong natin. If it is complicated, kapag po talagang ano na siya, parang ang dami-dami ng tanong sa kanya, hindi na po yan ma-absorb ng brain niya and mawawala na po tayo ng, uh, ng ano dun sa, sina, sa ginagawa natin when it comes sa polygraph examination. Hindi na natin makukuha yung proper noon. That's why uh, they must not contain inference to us religion, races, or belief. Kung alimbawa about the, uh, sa politics, hindi natin pwedeng pakialaman about him, yung part na yun. Religion, paniniwala niya sa, sa, sa Diyos. Hindi mo siya pwedeng tanungin kung anong religion niya, anong lahi niya, or anong race niya. Hindi mo siya pwedeng tanungin, agta ka ba? That's not a good question. You must not ask any uh, question especially on the on this situation. So yung gaya yung religion, races or maybe sa political belief ng isang tao. Okay? So let us again, so that are the the, uh, the rules. Again, to review, we have um 10 rules to be followed in doing the question. Ma'am and sir, nakuha niyo po mga uh, maikli man lang po 'yan. Did you get po sir, ma'am? Yung 10 Yes po, ma'am. Yes po. Ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Ma okay. Thank you po. Thank you. Next po, um, ito na po yung uh, two general types of questions. May Marami po kasi sabi kong klase ng question, but I will share only this uh, this general question. Itong pick attention test is only used for supplementary test lang po yan. Like for example, we are conducting a polygraph examination. Before an actual po, kailangan lang po natin kuhain yung sa kanyang attention. That's why we are using the peak attention. And then, we are using always the general question test. General question test, ito po yung common na ginagamit sa mga training na pag nagkakandak po. Pero kung mga, mga, mga talagang expert na po, marami na gagaya ng mga nagdadayo na po ng, ng ibang bansa ng pagtitraining, marami na po yung klase ng questioning. That's why we have to focus only here the so number one po. The most commonly applied, this consists of series of relevant and irrelevant question asked in a plan order. Nakaplano po ang sunod-sunod niyang tanong. Hindi po siya pwede na, na saka mo lang siya itatanong kapag andyan na yung subject sa actual, actual examination nakakablit na. Gagawin po natin ito kapag nalaman na po ng isang subject kung ano na yung rights niya and then meron tayo mo yung tayong tamang procedure diyan mamaya sa actual examination kunyari po so question are are so arranged as to make a comparison of response to relevant question with subject norm made during the answering of irrelevant question meaning meron tayong relevant and irrelevant 
Ano pong sa ibig sabihin ng relevant and relevant? Mamaya po, isa-isahin po natin. So we go to general question test. The relevant question. Itong this, uh, GQT, um, having a relevant question. One is uh, that deal with real issue of concern to the investigation. Nakafocus tayo with, for example, the case is robbery. Doon lang po sa, sa pagkuhan niya ng, ng, um, ng pera, alimbawa sa, sa kapitbahay ng 20,000, doon lang nakafocus yung tanong mo. That is relevant question. This question include asking whether examinee is perpetrated the, the target act or know how did it and perhaps question about particular pieces of evidence that would incriminate the guilty person. So, nandun po yun. Sa nakafocus lang tayo within the concern on the investigation. Alin yung concern investigation? Dun lang po dun sa, sa pagnanakaw sa kapitbahay. Nakafocus lang dun. Um, there, um, uh, perhaps may mga pieces of question, dun mo lang siya kukuhaan ng ng tanong sa part na yon. Another, the classification. Ang relevant question po, mayroon pa rin siyang iba-iba how you will ask the question. Meron tayong strong, meron tayong secondary or weak, or masusunod pa tayo. So, dito muna tayo sa first, the, the strong relevant or primary relevant question. Kung baga, ito yung pinakang mabigat na tanong mo sa kanya. Which has an intense relationship to the crime or problem being considered dun mismo to sa kaso na pinag-uusapan natin. This intended to produce strong emotional response in a guilty subject. Gusto mo lang siyang um, i-target dun sa, sa subject mismo, dun sa actual response niya. Kasi commonly, once he answer for this, laging no ang sagot dito dito. Like for example, did you steal Pedro Oya's laptop? Direct to the point, naka-state dyan, pero nakafocus lang siya dun sa pagnakaw nung laptop. No other. So, nakafocus siya. That, that is now an intense relationship with the crime. Although, baka sabihin natin, ay ma'am, we violate the rule number 6. Why? Kasi parang inaakusahan mo na siya. Kaso, no other question naman tayo para doon. Kasi, did you steal Pedro Oya's laptop? That is the, the way how we conduct a question. Kasi simple, direct, and uh, wala tayong ginamit na robbery, wala tayong ginamit na bulgari dyan. We use steel. Okay? The next po is letter B. Secondary or weak relevant. Our question that control a concern with element of the crime. Element lang po ng crime. Deals mostly on guilty knowledge and partial involvement. Kung halimbawa ang isang subject ay hindi mismo siya yung kumuha ng laptop, pwedeng sabihin na ikaw ba ang nagsahadon yung nagturo, halimbawa. Or maybe, pwedeng sabihin natin yung uh, ibang areas dyan, yung mga element, ano yung oras. Kaya nakalagay dito ang example, kaya sabi natin hindi maiwasan yung long question. Like for example, between 10 a.m. to 12 a.m. of February 10 to 2, uh, 2016, did you open the the table or drawer of Mr. Pedro San Andres kasi pwedeng nandoon yung laptop. Ibig sabihin, in that case, yung pagnanakaw pa rin, nakafocus, pero hindi siya directly compare dito sa isa na yun ang intense question mo. Here is secondary lang kasi ang tinitingnan mo lang is did you open the drawer? Hindi mo sinabi sa kanya na siya yung kumuha. So looking at this, is weak relevant lang siya. Kasi kapag sinabi niya binuksan niya or hindi niya binuksan, magre-react yun. Pero mas maganda nun talaga is nakuha natin yung, yung pangyayari. Kaya once we are conducting our uh, um, uh, investigation or the interview subject, we know everything about the situation dun sa mismong fax na ibibigay sa atin ng saat ng police. Here, another hindi uh, ka classification of weak relevant. Meron pa rin kung uh, classification yung weak relevant. Like here, sacrifice is relevant or they at question. Do you intend to answer truthfully? D is letter uh, D meaning sa D is did uh, do and ang Y is you and then 
ang A is answer and ang T is truthfully. So designed to absorb the response generally generated by introduction of the first relevant question in the series. Kapag kasi nagtanong tayo dito sa week relevant, maka-absorb niya, parang iisipin niya yung yung nangyari. Maaalala niyo yung past nung pagkuha or pagkakuha doon sa isang item. Reaction to this question give the examiner a clue as to the subject attitude of willingness or voluntariness to the subject to the test. Kung volunteer ba? Kasi minsan kasi, there are subject na blankado man pala ang isip niya. So ito, ito, nakakatulong ito na kailangan natin siyang tanungin ng ganitong klaseng tanong. Regarding the stolen laptop, do you intend truthfully to answer his question about that? Ibig sabihin, we are looking the the areas sa brain niya kung naka kung uh, aware ba siya or conscious ba siya sa tanong natin kasi baka naman sadyang binablangko niya ang isip niya isa po kasi yun sa sa pagbit ng pag uh, sa polygraph examination kung gusto mo siyang talunin yung polygraph wag mong isipin yung hindi na tanong sa iyo ng subject di ba ganun lang kadali ay eh, kaso ito kailangan nating isipin niya yung itinatanong mo para maalala niya kung ano yung nangyari. Another another question or another example of weak relevant question is regarding whether or not you shoot police officer Jan do do you intend to answer truthfully? It's question about that. So yun, nakafocus ka doon sa what? Sa sa tanong mo doon sa sa tanong pero ginamit niya pa rin yung pagpatay or yung pag-shoot doon sa police officer. Hindi man yun yung actual mong tanong, pero ang itinatanong mo is, dun lang yun sa kung tasagot ka ba ng tama dun sa tinatanong niya. So, parang inililigaw mo lang siya. So, that is yung tinasabi nating dayat question, which is under po yun ng classification ng weak relevant question. Okay po, next po tayo. Knowledge question po. Letter B na po. This type of question is propounded to the subject to detect information about crime that only guilty subject would have. Some information might include details about the site of crime or the means of committing it such as type of weapon use. So, connected pa rin. Yung kaalaman niya, kaya knowledge, ano yung idea niya or ano yung kaalaman niya pagdating doon sa pangyayari na krimen. So, do you know for sure who is to laptop of Mr. Juan Sanchez? So, nakafocus doon sa tanong na yun, pero ang tanong is, do you know? Alam mo ba? So, ibig sabihin, hindi siya yung mismong tinatanong ng siya talaga. Pero, titingnan natin kung may alam siya. Tabaka naman, nabintangan siya or naging suspect siya, pero siya pala ay may alam tungkol doon. So, isa yun. That is another way of questioning. Another, evidence connecting question. Pag evidence connecting, we have to look for the evidence. Like for example here, it has to do with inviting uh, subject attention. Kukuhain mo naman yung attention niya on probability of incriminating truth. Kasi by that, maiisip niya no? what happened during the time na kinuha yung laptop or maybe yung bagay. So, would tend to establish his guilt by linking him and the predicament to the fingerprint, pwedeng fingerprint, pwedeng wallet, or pwedeng footprint marks, or any others like the ID, the T-shirt, or anything na naiwan doon. So collected at the crime scene, lahat ng bagay na pwedeng nakuha sa crime scene. That's why po ang trabaho ni, ni examiner is pag punta sa iyo ng uh, ng police para magsabi na o oh, mapa kuha kami ng polygraph examination dapat full ang ibibigay niyang uh, lahat ng ng information ibibigay niya included yung pati sa investigation included yung lahat ng evidences na nakuha sa crime scene so that you can ask the question kasi kapag kulang po yung information na ibigay ni police tapos magkakandak si polygraph examiner and gagawa na siya ng questioning hindi po magagamit itong mga bagay na ito. So, dapat it is included in the facts of the case na isasubmit ni uh, polygraph examiner, uh, I'm sorry, ni, uh, ni uh, police, kung halimbawang policeman. Then, example, 
Here are the poor, uh, the put, where the footprint outside the house of Pedro is yours. So, tinatanong na yung evidence. Kinoconnect ka na dun sa evidence. Ibig sabihin, it's not direct asking a question. Pero, weak, relevant siya. Relevant siya dun sa kaso, pero weak. Medyo mababaw. Hindi, hindi siya, uh, hindi siya directly naka, naka, tanong dun as relevant. So, that is under ng, um, uh, Weak relevant. The next, control question. Ito yung sinasabi natin kanina dun sa history na, na ginawa. Na kung bakit ginamit yung control question para maging basis. Noon pong panahon, nung mga sinauna pa pong mga polygraph examiner, ang control question po, nagagamit siya na relevant, parang relevant na trend. Pero ngayon po, dahil na bago na at natuto na yung mga examiner natin, Lalo nilang napag-aralan at lalo nilang naintindihan that the control question can be used only to compare and to see. And ito yung dito, pag mataas ang graph dito ng subject, kapag mataas na masyado dito, pag dito siya kinabahan sa control question, truthful siya. Dati po, ginagamit ko is ano po siya, yung deceptive, yung may kasalanan or may tinatago. Pero ngayon po, sa bago, yung bago pong natutunan ko during our training, yung latest, Doon ko po naintindihan din na this comparison question test is used for uh, those truthful subject. Kapag dito siya kinabahan sa control question, meaning truthful siya, totoo siya, nagsasabi siya ng totoo. Kasi minimeasure po natin yun sa quantification. Uh, Ini-scoran po natin ito. Okay, we go to this uh, control question. If these are used for the purpose of comparison, Essentially, truthful subjects are believed by polygraph examiner to be more concerned about control than relevant question. Ito yung pinaglalaban niya, yung relevant na tanong, yung did you steal, yung example nating tanong kanina, did you steal Pedro Oya's laptop? That is a, a, a relevant question, a strong relevant question. And this control question, yung dalawang yan, yan ang pinaglalaban natin, and yan yung kinukulong. Inaano natin, kinu-compare. So, the response to the both and relevant question are compared in that way. So, comparison question test also called control question test. Kaya pag narinag niya po yung comparison question, iyan na po yung control question. Medyo na-develop na po kasi ngayon habang tumatagal. Kaya ginamit na natin yung comparison question. So, so this compare again. Response to the relevant question to the response to the other question that are believed to elicit physiological reaction. Kin in ini elicit po natin na no kino kuha yung physiological reaction from innocent examinees. Relevant question are defined as the relevant irrelevant test quest yung uh, test natin. Comparison question asked about general answerable act sometimes of the type of event under investigation mostly in the investigation situation okay, uh, have you ever stolen anything ang example dito sa sa ano sa um, comparison test is have you uh, ever stolen anything dito mostly we are using a date gumagamit tayo ng petsa like for example nangyari yung crime is uh, 2019 you will ask the question, did you stole anything uh, in the year 2015? Parang kukuhain mo yung, yung past niya. Nag-focus ka dun, nag-focus siya dun sa past. Like for example, did you, did you um, stolen anything noong 2015? Pero na-commit yung crime is 2019. Ang mismong ano, uh, pangyayari is 19. So, anong nangyari doon sa brain niya? Anong nangyari, nangyari sa physiological niya? Mayroon siyang reaction. Bakit? Pag nag-focus siya doon sa kanyang reaction doon sa nakaraan, iisipin niya, pag uh, sumabi siya ng yes, ang iisipin niya kung may kinuha siya ng kahit anong bagay ng 2015 or before in that year, pwede nakafocus siya doon, natatakot na siya doon sa susunod kasi baka ang susunod na itanong sa kanya is yung kasalanan niya ng 2019. So, hindi, hindi, hindi magbabala. So, pag kinumpare natin siya, the comparison question, matataas talaga siya dun kasi may takot siya. Kasi, inaamin niya sa sarili niya na may ginawa siyang mali noon. Hindi siya nag-focus dun sa ngayon. Kaya, yun ang kagandahan dito sa question na to. 
Next, the probable lie, ito, comparison question test, the instructions are designed to induce innocent people to answer in a negative. Ito yun. Kasi lagi ang sagot niyan dyan is no. Di ba? Even though most are lying. Siyempre, sasabihin niyan, no? Pero sa yung totoo, talagang nagsisinungalin siya. Innocent examiner or uh, innocent examinees or yung subject are exper uh, expected to experience concern. Excuse me. Nainom lang po ako, ha? <coughs> okay. Continue. So, uh, with the uh, probable lie, directed lie test, examiners are instructed to respond negatively or untruthfully to comparison. Uh, next is the... Uh, during the first 20 years of your life, did you ever uh, tell anyone lie? So, doon sa tanong na yun, meron tayong uh, may probable and meron tayong directed. Bibigyan mo siya ng instruction na magsinungaling. So, kasi iti-check mo siya. Kaya nga i-compare. So, in the past form of this, the expectation is that innocent examinees will react more strongly to comparison question. Ito yung sinabi ko sa inyo kanina, na mas tataas yung yung graph niya and mas matatakot siya doon sa tinatanong mo ngayon about doon sa sinasabi nating comparison question kasi ang inaano mo is ang tinatanong is yung nakaraan eh di parang natatakot na siya doon sa susunod so well the examiners will react more strongly to relevant question so pag naman doon sa mga examiners na na may kasalanan talaga siya doon siya sa strong relevant question magre-react hindi dito sa sa comparison pero will not uh, uh, say that dun sa subject. Tayo lang ang nakakaalam nito as examiners. Nakuha po yung difference kung bakit natin kailangan i-direct to lie the subject. May mga ganun kasi talagang case. Pero ang kinukuha natin po is the way of recording the physiological. <clears throat> okay? The next po is the two kinds of control question. Meron tayong primary and meron po tayong secondary control question. Ito po, medyo, medyo komplikado na. Kasi nga po, mayroon ng primary, may secondary pa. We have to recall the offense done from the time of childhood up to 3 to 5 years before. The occurrence of this present offense being investigated. Palagi natin kukunin yung previous. Kung makikita niyo po sa formulation ng question, mayroon na po kasi yan sa computer eh. Pag computerized po yung ginamit nating machine, mostly, uh, naka, naka set up na po yan may guided na. Kaso lang po, depende sa kaso, syempre po na hawakan na, nahahawakan. So, dito po, ang common na tanong po dyan is kung yung subject is uh, nasa age na ng 28 o 29, we have to ask the question dito po sa before siya mag age ng 29, nasa 25. Kaya po, ang tanong dito is before reaching the age of 25, have you ever stolen anything? Ang control question po natin is nakafocus siya with the age of 25. Pero actual pong na-commit yung crime ay nasa age na siya ng 29. So kaya nga primary control is we are, we are looking for kung nag-focus siya dun sa panahon na yun. Kasi he will look back, aalalahanin niya yung mga previous years. Dun siya ma-focus. Ma pag siya ay ano, pag siya ay innocent, dun siya ma-focus. Pero kapag siya naman po ay guilty, doon siya ma-focus, magre-react siya doon sa tanong mo na yung ngayon. Yung tanong mo na, did you stole the laptop of Pedro Oya? Ganun yung sitwasyon. <clears throat> okay, sa uh, secondary control question, more specific in nature is based upon another sort of wrongdoing. Will enhance the subject opportunity for responsive. Uh, responsiveness. Its scope include up to the present period of examination. Have you ever stolen anything from this locality? So, parang secondary lang siya. Hindi nakafocus mismo sa sa kung anong pangyayari dun sa crime, but focus pa rin for stolen, pero in general na siya, in locality. So, if you can notice, may primary, may secondary. How you can differentiate the two? Kasi mostly, you can differentiate dyan kasi kung gaano siya ka kababaw yung tanong. Kasi dito, mismong pinokus siya dun sa age of 25 sa primary. 
Samantalang sa secondary, eh, na-focus siya dun sa locality. Kumbaga, nililigaw lang yung isip niya para para pa, pa, pagalawin niya, paganahin niya yung utak niya dun sa panahon na yon or dun sa lugar na yon. Even though, uh, we are looking for kung gaano talaga siya ka-intense kapag dumating na tayo sa relevant question. Kaya po itong um, control question, it will ask, magkatabi po sila. Lagi silang magkasunodan ni control question at saka ni relevant question. Okay po? <clears throat> Sana po na po ha po, pasensya na kasi ang hirap po kasi wala tayo, hindi tayo naka-actual. Uh, ano. Pero we'll continue again. So the irrelevant neutral question, yun po ang nauna kanina is lahat po yun relevant. Nagkaiba-iba lang siya sa different classification, may weak, meron po tayong uh, mga uh, control question. Pero dito po, irrelevant na po. May tanong po kasi tayo, ma'am and sir, na hindi po related sa kaso. Uh, highly needed din po ito para po ma-differentiate natin yung different response ng subject doon sa takot siya or sa pwedeng natural lang ang pakiramdam niya. So, dito po, sa tanong na, uh, dito po, uh, itake, itake ka po natin about irrelevant question. Types of question were have no importance to the case under investigation. These are question which are believed to have no or very little emotional impact on the subject. Hindi siya mag-iisip or wala na siyang masyadong itatanong doon. Uh, sa isip niya kasi parang ang tanong mo lang dito is are you wearing red uh, t-shirt? Mga ganon. Or uh, today is Monday? Mga ganon lang po ang question sa neutral. Such question can be used as an indicator of particular subject normal baseline level or arousal. This must precede the relevance ones. Ito lang po yung basihan po natin kung kailan relax yung subject. Ganyan po siya kahalaga sa pagkakandak ng polygraph examination, yung tanong na neutral or irrelevant. No connection to the, uh, uh, to the case we are talking or dun sa investigation. Walang connection. Okay. Uh, irrelevant question is one designed to provoke no emotion. Is today, is Monday? Yan, yung mga ganong tanong. Irrelevant question are typically placed in the first position a question list because the physiological response that flow the presentation of the first question are presumed to have no diagnostic value. Kasi yung unang tanong po natin, the first question is no uh, diagnostic value. Ibig sabihin, kung, kung ikaw yung doctor, nasa level siya na nakapantay lang kasi relax man niya ng subject. Kailangan relax siya. Kailangan hindi siya takot sa tanong mo. Kaya dapat the question is not really bad to the case you are uh, talking. So they are also placed on the other point in the question sequence. Kapag nagkakandak na ng questioning, nakasequence lang siya, nakasingit lang siya. Pero mostly, typically, ibig sabihin, ito na yung most na ginagawa ng lahat ng examiner, naka-place lagi siya sa question number one, yung irrelevant question. So gal the examine are expected to show stronger reaction to relevant than to irrelevant question. In, uh, innocent examinee are expected to re react similarly to both question type. Yan. Yung, in, uh, yung innocent kasi, makikita mo, uh, parehas ang reaction niya dun sa uh, irrelevant at relevant question na itinanong mo. While dun sa uh, guilty subject, stronger siya pagdating sa relevant. Kumbaga, mas mataas yung graph na makikita natin. Okay, that's why we have our irrelevant question. The common question na itinatanong natin, yung tawag nating IR or neutral question, are designed emotionally neutral to examine the uh, ACA or the norms and neutral, where should be answered with a yes. This type of question in both uh, the examiner and examinee know the true answer. Dapat kasi open din yung uh, conscious pa rin siya, yung mind niya, yung brain niya, alam niya. So it is intended to establish examining physiological norm. Is today's Monday? Is your last name is Pet, uh, Pedro or uh, San Juan? Right now, are you wearing a uh, blue color shirt? So ganun lang yung mga common na question sa irrelevant. And ang sabi dyan is answered with a yes. 
Okay din naman yung no. Kaya lang, uh, we are looking for kung po pwede, yes na dapat yung answer niya palagi doon sa irrelevant. Kasi irrelevant, uh, irrelevant naman siya and wala naman siyang connection within the, uh, the uh, case. Okay. The next is the simplementary test question. Ito po yung sinabi ko sa kanyo kanina na ginagawa lang po siya doon po sa isang ano, pero sa isang subject po na parang hindi siya cooperative. Yan lang po yung parang ganong sitwasyon. Kasi po, ito pong pick up tension test is uh, baka po kasi yung subject mo is not uh, cooperative with you. Although nag-oo siya, oo, you agree with the examination, but in the, in the time you conduct an examination, baka naman he is not willing kasi pinipress niya yung isip niya na nakakokus siya within the the um, um the, sa ibang bagay. Kabaga, kailangan buhayin natin dito. Kaya mayroon po tayong supplementary test question. Pero hindi po siya included kapag nagawa tayo ng questioning. Yung 10 question dun sa general question test. Ito pong supplementary, commonly it is done before. Uh, sa mga training nito, kadalasan ganito po ang ginagamit. The peak attention test is similar in format to concealed information test. But the distinct because question are asked and easily recognized. Example, was the amount of student money yan? Madali mo siyang makuha kasi pinapipili na siya doon sa um, nandun ng mga evidences or mga ano, kagaya dito, ang ginamit dito is ano, kasi the book na kinunan ko po ng reference dito is American book, that's why it's naka-dollar po yan. So that, that's why the situation is like that. Pick up tension only. Titingnan lang natin kung nagkukonceal siya ng information. Pero ibang dating sa kanya, pipili siya. Siya ang pipili. And it's not a uh, uh, say na yes or no ang sagot. A guilty examining uh, is expected to show a pattern of responsiveness that increases the correct alternative approach and the question sequence and decreases with the pass. Simulation tests often have this format paggagamit ng simulation. Mm. Although, here, hindi ito masyadong gamit na, ano, kasi ginagamit ito, yung papakita kong sample sa inyo mamaya ng video, is pick up tension test lang yun. Sa is known so, uh, solution of pick tension test, the examiner show with alternative in one truly connected to the incident and evaluate the examinee pattern of response for evidence of involvement in the incident. It's also possible to use the pick up tension test in reaching or searching mode when examiner does not know which answer is connected to the event, but want to use the, for, the test for help in an investigation. So it's assumed that pattern of guilty person autom uh, autonomic response will reveal the correct answer. Dito kasi, um, kinukuha mo lang yung kanyang feeling. But here, still, magagamit pa rin siya connected with uh, the event or the crime or maybe sa case. Pero mostly, uh, present na po yung mga um, like the, the amount or the place na papipiliin na lang siya. Another, ito mga mga ma-encounter nyo rin kasi po ito kaya included this, yung mga way how you will ask the question is sky question. An optional question used to verify the previous chart. Kasi um, may mga case po kasi tayo na pwede natin ulitin yung questioning. Yung mga nakaraan na uh, pwede tayong mag-review. Uh, although um, limited only for 10 question ang isang setting, pero pwede naman po nating umulit, pero pwede tayong gumamit ng sky question. The sky, the S, is do you, uh, do you suspect anyone in uh, particular stealing any of that money? Kaya naka-state dyan is uh, uh, S, yung S na yan is uh, suspect, nakafocus in suspect. Yung K, do you know? Yung K is no. For sure, who stole any money uh, any of the money. So parang dito, inaalam mo lang, so bini-verify mo lang yung, yung, yung previous na pinag-usapan nyo. Another is why. Yung why, that you. Yung why doon is you. Still any of the money. Kinukuha natin yung you doon. So nakuha natin, S is for suspect, uh, K is for no, and Y is for you. Yan yung kinukuha dyan natin. Kaya may sky question po. Ginagawa lang po siya, optional to verify the previous meaning uh, yung 10 question um, na 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 formulate na ipo formulate meaning hindi po siya yon kasama doon yung sky question 
parang review question yun sa subject. Kung may gusto kang i-verify doon sa chart na, na, na nabuo. Kasi baka mayroon kang uh, kailangan pang alamin. So kaya applied po yung sky question. Okay po, symptomatic question, the same. Um, we asked also yung term na symptomatic question to the subject kasi po kailangan din. Is used to determine whether the examine is truly convinced that the forensic physiology, psychophysiology, yung FP natin, once you encounter that term, psychophysiology is the person who are conducting uh, the polygraph examination, will not ask unreviewed question during the polygraph verification. Kasi tayo po, ang setting po natin, may basis po tayo ng polygraph examination. In that case, um, then sa basis natin, isa po yan, may mga reviewed and unreviewed question po tayo. So, dito, the the um, the test and whether there is something else, the examinee is afraid, yung kinatatakutan niya, na itanong sa kanya about, so the, the um, those those things na na-afraid siya to ask him a question about, even though the psychophysiologist promised to examine, he would not. Kaya yan, sinabi ko na, halimbawa, as I am the examiner, I, I tell him, na sabi ko, I will not I will not ask the question to you na hindi natin nada-review. Minsan, baka may takot siya, kaya nga symptomatic question. So, example of this are, are you completely com convinced that I will not ask you an unreviewed question in the chart? So, dito, parang kinukuha lang natin yung awareness niya. Gaya nung binanggit natin po kanina. Is there something else you are afraid? May kinatatakutan ka ba? I will ask you a question about even though I told you I would not. So, yan yung mga, mga symptomatic question lang yan. Parang pang zywar lang natin yan dun sa subject. Guilty complex test. Ito, I at this, although ang gagamitin natin is control R or the, uh, the general question test. Pero, by ano, kasi baka ma-encounter niya itong GCT. Although, part pa rin ito po ng test na lagi nating uh, nakikita. Kasi po, sa totoo lang, pag binuksan mo yung yung uh, software po ng inopen po ng ating uh, um, yung sa sa polygraph, ang dami-dami po kasi ng test. Actually, nag-pick lang po ako ng ilan, yung general question test, tapos yun nga lang po. Pero yung totoo po, pag sa dami po doon, kayo mapapagod ka mag-check mag kung alin ang gusto mo. So, ang hirap lang kung i-manipulate or isipin kung paano siya gagawin. So, ito po sa GCT, the, this is the test is applied when the response to really bad and control question are similar in degree and consistency. Kikitingnan mo lang po yung how consistent yung, yung emotion ng subject and the way that the examiner cannot determine whether the subject is telling the truth or not. Parang complex test lang po siya. Parang pag ikaw ang isang examiner, nahirapan ka na, medyo ano, kailangan mo siyang maganda, ang i-apply mo na is guilty complex test na. The subject is asked question aside from the irrelevant, relevant and control question. A new series of relevant question dealing with incident in which the subject could not have committed. Gagamitan mo na siya ng ibang question na naka hindi siya yung uh, nakafocus na siya doon sa na nakaraan na ibang part where um na hindi niya naman na commit. Kumbaga, ito try mo lang yung uh, guilty area niya doon sa sa grab parang just to double check. Kaya may uh, guilty complex test. Pero ang commonly po uh, hindi naman na siya ini-apply ng mga regular na, 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 na test. Pero kapag yun talagang komplikado po and um, need po ng another uh, psychophysiologist na i-check yung chart, hindi hindi maganda yung yung response, parang uh, inconclusive ba, parang ang feeling mo hindi mo maintindihan kung guilty or not guilty, ginagawa nila is kumagawa sila ng form of question again, that guilty complex test. That's why we have that. Another, meron din po tayong silent answer test. This silent answer test, ginagawa rin po ito sa mga training. Um, this test is conducted in the same manner. We really bad in control question are asked, but the subject is instructed to answer the question silently. Easy plan. Halimbawa, pinapick ka ng isang number. You pick a number 6. Tapos hindi mo sasabihin sa examiner na ang pinili mo number 6. Tapos tatanungin ka ng uh, anim na tanong. Alimbawa, did you pick number one? Tapos, silent lang yon. Did you pick number two? Hanggang sa nakabot dun sa six. 
Tapos hanggang di sa 6, sasabihin mo pa rin lahat, no? di ba? Kasi silent lang sa isip mo. Doon, iti-check doon, ano yung response mo? Without making any verbal uh, response, causes distortion in tracing such as sniff or clearing the truth. Pwede mangyari kasi po yun. Mostly sa mga training po, ganito lang po kami nagtitest para medyo matipid yung time. We are doing, nalimbawa, um, uh, card, card test. Kasi meron din po ditong card test, may silent answer test. Pero it is done na hindi ka magsasalita. You will not ask or you will not uh, speak uh, loudly. Nasasabi kang no or yes. Hindi yon Isip lang. Isa yon sa nakakatulong just to look for the response of the subject sa isip. Kung talagang aware siya sa mga bagay na itinatanong sa kanya. Next is the zone comparison test. Another Ito, uh, connected siya dun sa ating uh, topic kanina, yung sinabi natin, general question test. The zone comparison test is important. The 20, uh, 22-35 second block of polygraph chart, time initiated by a question, having unique uh, psychological post, uh, focusing appeal to predictable group of examining. Ang hirap ko pong ipigay sa inyo ng instruction about this kasi wala po ka yung sample, yung, yung chart, actually sample po ng chart. Kasi po, nag-lockdown po, hindi na-close po yung school namin. Uh, hindi po muna kami naka, naka... Hindi ako nakakuha ng sample ng chart. But still, yung zone comparison test, may, po, may, may mga chart naman po dyan sa, sa video na ipakikita ko para ma ma-determine lang ninyo. Kasi dito po, sa zone comparison test, mostly po, uh, 20 to 35. Meaning, kami po, we do only 20 to 25. Hindi na po maabot sa 30... 5 seconds kasi masyado na pong mahaba yun. Kasi kada block po nun, kada guhit nung, nung sinasabi nating graph is nasa 5 seconds po yun. 5. Pero yung pong 5, di ilang uh, ilan pong uh, seconds yun. So kailangan po natin ng 5 graph kada question. So kaya po gumagamit ng uh, compa uh, zone comparison test. Ito po yung ginagamit natin ngayon na makikita natin yung mga graph kung bakit Bakit doon tumatama yon? So, ito. Uh, let us see yung uh, sa polygraph examination para makita po natin yung mga graph. Uh, can we have, sir, ma'am? I sir, ma'am. Uh, before we we go to this, mag, pakita po muna ako ng ano. Uh, ah, sige po, ma'am. 